So what do you think, however, about the funding of all these different wars, say in the, like the Middle East, the Ukraine region, and uh, just in total, like the response from other countries we've had with our economy based on that? Like, how much do you think that's affected our economy in the last couple of years, I guess, since the wars about broke? Um, the the Russian invasion of Ukraine has definitely hurt the U.S. economy for a short bit due to the oil crunch that happened um, in Europe. Uh, other than that, it has neither of these uh, like conflicts have have hurt our economy in any way, shape, or form. The money that we're sending over to Ukraine is it, it, like we're not sending. I think like ninety percent or higher of the amount of aid that we've sent them is physical materials that we were going to have to blow up here at home for a higher cost than just shipping them over to Ukraine. Right. It's not money it, like these are non fungible things. You can't just like say, oh, well, we have, you know, uh, 400,000 attack of missiles. We're going to send those over. Well, that would be a blessing to them. But, uh, you know, we have 4000 attack of missiles. We're going to ship those over to Ukraine. Oh, no. Now our GDP has gone down. No, like we had 4000 attack of missiles that were close to their expiration. We were going to have to ship them off to like Lockheed Martin or some other whoever produces them to dispose of them safely here at home because they only have a, a certain shelf life uh, before they start losing efficacy. So we were sending those over to Ukraine. Those aren't hurting our economy whatsoever. If anything, we're saving money by sending missiles over to Ukraine. The only way I disagree there is so if you remember back when the Tomahawk missile stopped being continued because it was about a 1.7, I think $1.8 million a piece to produce. Yeah. Uh, we started switching to cheaper cost effective long range missile equipment. And once we started hitting that line, we started pumping them out by numbers effectively increasing over what we spent on the Tomahawk missiles because under Obama's presidency, I'm pretty sure we had. 10,000 made uh, Tomahawk missiles or so in his time. And by shipping these out, essentially, how I see it is if we're spending all this money to make one weapon for the U.S.'s defense budget, which honestly is pretty damn high considering it's always been one of the highest budgets you get in the United States. When we send all that over there, we're essentially wasting resource, wasting the money that we use to build it for home defense or homeland defense or even just sending out to our allies to be able to use it where they need it. Uh, in general, I feel like a lot of that money that is taxpayer money that funds a lot of these departments, it was wasted on pretty much genocide you know they said it the best out there uh they don't really portray the ukraine war the best right now because the ukrainians have been honestly getting their ass kicked they're a small country they've been dwindling in numbers since the last four years the war started and well, uh, i mean it's been two years right because they invaded in 2022 right 22 yeah they they invaded in 2022 22? i mean unless you're talking about like the like invasion of 2014 and russia sending soldiers in since then um, what the annexation of Crimea? Uh, yeah, the annexation of Crimea, and they also invaded the Donbass when the uh, militias there that they were funding weren't cutting it. I just so, believe that we've been funneling money into kind of a pointless meat grinder, if that makes sense. You know well, what I'm saying? Not, like we're well, sending all this pointless. stuff that we could possibly. Uh, I'll tell you why it's not pointless. All right. So there's two major things, right? We can um, the implications for Taiwan and the implications for Russia just going and doing land domination warfare, um, which is unheard of in the modern world. All right. Um, so on on that second point, let's start with that. Um, we don't want to encourage or allow other nations to think that they can go through and just bully smaller nations, especially ones that we have good relationships with, that we have partnerships with, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and make it seem like we're going to back out of deals um, with people that we've, you know, made deals with. Um, that would be like a really bad look for America, show that we don't have, you know, the gumption to actually stand with our allies. Um, we also don't want Russia to feel like they can just like invade Ukraine unanswered because we have allies that they're looking at next, like Poland, like the, Bal uh, the Baltic states. Um, those countries are super scared of what's coming next if Ukraine falls. Um, like there's like a 
immediate in that region reason for us to be funding Ukraine, right? Russia is uh, openly antagonistic towards the United States. They openly with our um, information space and lie to American citizens so that we become ungovernable, right? It's the same tactic that they did in Ukraine. It's the same tactic that they did in um, Georgia. It's the same tactic that they did uh, basically every single place that they've gone in and just like the entire country up. Uh, they want to make that country ungovernable so that they can go in and take over. Um, so like that's point number one. Number two, when it comes to Taiwan... Uh, if we abandon Ukraine after, you know, like a, a country that has a a rail network that goes into allied countries where we can easily give them um, easily give them munitions to defend themselves. Right. Someone that we said that we were going to help them defend themselves. W what kind of message does that send to Taiwan? What kind of message does that send to China when they're. Well, is Taiwan, uh, does Taiwan, is Taiwan signed under NATO? I can't remember if they are. No, but check. but that doesn't matter for this conversation because the entire world in like especially the united states we have a vested interest in making sure that taiwan is allowed to continue to exist as it is right now because they produce most of the world's semiconductors uh, the only reason me and you can talk to each other right now is because we're talking on on devices that are filled with semiconductors uh, our entire military is built off of machines that have semiconductors in them so that we can communicate and be effective on the battlefield. And if China takes oh, yeah, over okay. Taiwan... So I agree with then, you there. If Taiwan is the important... Why wouldn't we focus most of our efforts to defending Taiwan instead of the Ukraine? Well, we already are focusing on that. Biden's um, foreign policy in the Pacific has led us to become allies with people that we would have never thought we were going to be allies with because China is such a unique danger to that area, right? Vietnam is now a partner with the United States for peace in the Southeast Asian uh, theater. Um, the, so like, as, September, as of September 20th, just to kind of fact check where you said that we have been sending, you know, we have been focusing it there. So as of September 20th of 2024, the U.S. is in, in its final stages of sending almost $570 million in security to Taiwan, meaning which I think would be like land to air missile capabilities, other stuff land to like air that. and yeah, uh, surface to surface missiles uh, and shit like in that. Ukraine, yeah. give me one moment. How much aid? A couple billion. Supply. Couple tens of billions. Couple tens of billions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we're in. Uh, the last time I saw it, the last amount of money we sent them was eight billion. Yeah, for something like that. The smaller country that doesn't provide as much, it just it, it seems almost as a waste of money when we like you again said, have somebody in Taiwan that produces for the rest of the world. Well, again, like that just like leads back to the entire first part of the conversation and to the first half of the second part of the conversation, right? So uh, the first part of the conversation was what kind of message, what kind of like world do we want to live in? Is it one where people are going around and con like doing? conquests of land uh for uh you know their for like land growth for their country um because this is what russia is doing in ukraine they want to take the entirety of ukraine so that they can turn them into a client state um that doesn't bode well to any of our allies for trust in the united states that we would defend them since we had such a close partnership with ukraine leading into the russian invasion of ukraine um, like, why would we defend the only them? reason we have any kind of relations with them to begin with is because of the uh, I'm not even going to try and say the name because I know my Don the Maidan revolution. No, not the Maidan revolution. We also stuck a nuclear power plant on in their uh, oh, Zaporizhia. Yeah, Zaporizhia. Well, I, I thought that that was that has been there since the Soviet days. It has been there since the Soviet days. However, once we got once the once the age of the Soviet Union kind of came around and collapsed, the U.S. started speaking with Ukraine and was like, "Hey, we can supply the stuff for Zaporizhia." I believe is how you just said Zaporizhia, it. Zaporizhia, yeah, yeah, it's totally fine. I okay, get you. Thank you so much, dude. That thing looks like somebody dragged their hand across keyboard. <laughs> uh, I we start. Sorry, my wife's chasing the cats around, so I'm trying to keep one contained. You're totally fine, man. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we had sent out pretty much offers to Ukraine saying, hey, we'll supply you guys with the coolant, you know, reactor cores, whatever you guys might need. 
in exchange for letting us keep a base of operations in that area of that Donbass. So when they stuck out their operations in that Donbass region, we were able to effectively spy on Russia from right over their border. We've had good ties with Ukraine, but it's been pretty much a parasitic relationship just to be able to spy over the border of Russia and send people in closer. Because we're allowed I, to go I, to Ukraine once – you're allowed to go to Ukraine, and then once you slip into the border of Russia, you really ain't going to get stopped. You're 200-plus miles from it, maybe. I, I don't understand what the problem here is. So we stuck that there, and all of a sudden NATO – or Ukraine wants to turn around and become a NATO ally – Putin's like, okay, what the f you guys have this spy station out here in this Donbass region of Ukraine, but we can't spy on you guys with any other territories. Like, we can't put a surveillance camera in Mexico and stare over at you guys and see what you're doing. Actually, they could. If they, like, actually, they like could this. if your, they wanted your neighbors to. All have, uh, your, your neighbors all Hold have— Hold on, really quick. Yeah, you're good, they you're they good. absolutely could. They could if Mexico was okay with that. But oh, Mexico is not okay with that because they like us more than they like Russia. Uh, the, yes, but what I'm saying is if they were to do that, the rest of us using NATO power would absolutely decimate them. Not not not. Tr I don't think that we would invade Mexico. No, I don't think that that's the the case. It's like again, like Russia doesn't get to dictate the foreign policy of Ukraine any more than we get to dictate the policy the foreign policy of Mexico. Anything that we try to like set up with Mexico to influence their foreign policy, say like on the border, is going to have to be done through you know like mutual like agreements and you know uh, signed out policy that we agree to do. Uh, we don't have any kind of sovereignty over Mexico. Russia doesn't have any sovereignty over Ukraine. Russia doesn't get to t say whether or not Ukraine gets to join NATO or not. Unless you want to live in a world where bigger countries can just like walk up to smaller countries and say, oh, actually, you're part of our empire now. Then I don't think we should live in a world like that at all by any means. But it's sad to see Ukraine getting smacked by such a larger power. And the only thing that they can get is a couple of older guns from, you know, different helping states. And us being the number one country that has supplied them, it's kind of it, – you've got to see it in the terms of, like, money-wise for everybody else. The place will still exist. It's the place will still exist, but Ukraine like, control. but yeah, but like, would you, would you accept if like China were to invade the United States and then our allies, like they kind of like sold us out and we lost everything from like California to mid Texas, um, because, uh, like at the end of the day, we just couldn't fight on our own against such a large foe. All of our allies sold us out. Do you think that like, we would be okay with the fact that like at the end of the day, half of our country got taken from us? Um, no, I don't think we would be okay with it. I don't think anybody but it still would be exists, okay with it. But, the, but, but it, it still, still exists. exists. Yeah. That was the argument. But yeah, yes, but that doesn't but that, matter because people argument. don't care. With you people yes, don't care. Exists. People don't care about that. People care about like the 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 justice aspect of it right people want there to be a just end to a war people want the good guys to win they don't want the bullies to win and at the end of the day who is the bully here is it the united states for entering into a mutually agreed upon uh deal where the ukrainians got something good out of it the united states got something good out of it uh nobody else it, like it has any say in that agreement because it's a bilateral agreement between two states right um, nobody else gets to have a say in that. Like if you made a business deal with someone and you said, all right, I'm going to pay you $50 for, um, you know, said services. And they're like, yeah, I will, I will do said services for $50. And then someone else comes in and says, no, actually you're not allowed to do that because I don't like the fact that you're doing this kind of business. Do you think that that is just, no, nobody would want not that. Just, but is it going to happen? Yes. And that's well, what I'm actually, to accept. You know but, what I'm saying? But here's the thing. It doesn't it, it's not going to happen. It doesn't have to happen. The only reason the only way that it would happen is if we seed our place in the world as the world leader, if we seed our place in the world as the, you know, like person to go to when shit gets up we are the world leader when it comes to anything regarding you know uh you know policing of certain things right right 
And why would we cede that ground when I think that we, like, we've made some mistakes, but by and large, the more that I learn about our foreign policy, like, over the course of, you know, or United States history in the modern age, like, a, a good chunk of what we did, we were, like, the good guys, especially, you know, with the exception of the Iraq War, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong, with the exception the, of the Iraq I War. I was talking to like, the other day, and he said Vietnam is where we really f***ed up, uh, it's just because we sent a bunch of kids that were probably, I'm 22, almost 23. They probably sent kids that were younger than me by five, six oh, yeah, years. Oh yeah, they were sending 18 years. Yeah, they were sending 18 year olds over there. Yeah, like Vietnam was yeah. a was a was a shit foreign policy decision, um, and like it got shittier the longer that we decided not to have like a a good, <laughs> you know, strategy there. But like we like post Cold War. With the sole exception of the war in Iraq, I would I would defend the war in Afghanistan, like till the cows came home. All right, like there's I don't know. I I feel like the war in Afghanistan versus the war in Iraq. The war in Afghanistan is where the guys that the bombed us. Well, the guys that were that blew up the twin towers were in Afghanistan. They weren't in Iraq. There was no reason for us to go into Iraq except for right, right, right. So like there was a, the an actual though, reason. You... Do you believe in the idea that our president had something to do with 9-11? No, not at all. There's been no evidence that has been presented to me that is convincing at all. Well, just on, on the basis that I am, uh, that's where my stemming of it comes from, from where both were kind of pointless. Think about how unhappy I, you're I making the Taliban, as... or I'm sorry, Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, they worked so hard to like come up with that plan. And they came out and took responsibility for it immediately. Osama bin Laden even made a whole uh, manifesto explaining why he did 9-11. And then, like, we're just going to just, like, take that from them. We're going to take that from them and we're going to put it on our own government? No. I, that Like, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever for us to do that to ourselves, even at the time. I mean, it makes enough sense when you when you factor in what we've done before, you know? When unit, I think it was unit 731 from Imperial, the Imperial Japanese Army was doing all that testing on a bunch of people. And like, yeah, that was pretty rough. They're the reason we know the body percentage of water and stuff like that. Uh, I don't put it past them because we. Wait, we didn't do that, though. That was the Jap. That was like the crazy, like pseudo fascist Imperial Japanese military that did that why would we like be involved in that whatsoever why are we putting that on us they were I mean, they, we nuked you, them, didn't we? I, I mean yeah we nuked them because they were they bombed us first and then they killed a bunch of our dudes and they were raping and killing and and experimenting on all the asians in mainland asia like uh, why why is that our fault <laughs> why why does well, i'm not saying it's necessarily our fault but like but here's the implications a, of us forgiving countless war crimes on the basis of oh this provides us information on you know i mean i don't know if we I, I don't know if we forgave those things because we had military tribunals and prosecuted you know and None put to guys death from unit 731 were ever on that tribunal you can actually fact check me on it well i mean i'll, I'll believe you for that like i i again there's not 100 percent of everything that we've ever done has been like the the perfect justice thing like they probably like stole some of those scientists maybe and like just like they did with the Nazis, just like the Soviets did. They stole scientists and said, we won't send you to the gulag if you help us work on our space mission shit, right? Or on our nuclear shit. So you're actually a very sensible, like when I first came into your stream, I was kind of like a bit skeptical because like I said, you were kind of going in a little hard on that guy. And I'm not one that likes to talk about politics, super hardcore and like just the history of what made things kind of come to what they are now so hardcore because I like gaining actual facts. And if I can learn something from you, that's kind of why I talk to you. I yeah, think absolutely. That we actually agree on a lot more things that I realize. Uh, we just have two kind of different opinions on how the country should be ran just with the same goal of where we should be at. And, uh, I think that's what's kind of missing now is as we've been sitting here talking you know i agree a lot with you and you've made a lot of points that i agree with and i feel like i've kind of said some things that you agree with and yeah you don't sound like totally me, unreasonable yeah.